and on the screen itself right now it will display the amount of time remaining for you to do a full charge based on the cap that you have set so that's actually pretty fast right because it's showing on the screen 25 minutes very very fast that's why it's called a supercharger lawrence is an ev pioneer in singapore starting almost six years ago when he first started driving blue sg when he launched a service on 12th december 2017. in this video we hear from lawrence the og one of the og ev pioneers here on his six year journey going from blue sg to eventually becoming a tesla model 3 owner click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on evs how did your journey with EVs begin? Yeah, so I remember like what um, you have just mentioned. It was on the 12th of December, 2017. Um, during that whole period, you know, even days leading to, towards this day, my wife actually passed me an advertisement about Blue SG, offering very affordable rentals and it's also EVs. So why EVs? Because as a tech enthusiast, you know, EVs, definitely has something to do with using technology plus mechanics, right, to help um, move, move a vehicle in, in a sense. So I got really excited when I heard about this and it was like love at first sight. So having the license for three years and not being able to utilize it because my family doesn't own a car and at back then renting a car is really expensive and it's mainly on a daily basis. Blue actually offer this special rate of renting by timing where you can or ran at probably back then it was 30 cents or 33 cents a minute because of that you know i actually started my ev journey on blue sg first ev was blue sg and lawrence is not alone for many singaporeans when they think evs they see this car here next to us this has been an iconic car in singapore for many years now how have you seen blue sg shape perceptions in singapore about evs any stories to share yeah, so I I, I, genuinely, I personally believe that the, the rise of Blue SG has helped promote the goodness of electric vehicles throughout the community. I think firstly, um, Blue SG itself is small, you know, as, as a car. It's easily to pick up, you know. You just probably need to get familiar with how uh, EV works versus a petrol, where you step on the accelerator. Um, it actually takes a bit more force as compared to a petrol car where a gentle push or depression on the accelerator it will move the car very quickly but an EV is slightly different I think just surpassing that you can get you can easily pick up an electric vehicle and it's very quiet it's very nice to drive and very comfortable and and it's easy to park because it's small right and being a tech enthusiast as I just mentioned you know most of the people right now we have a mobile device in our phone you can just pick up the phone, download the app and easily find the nearest stations around you and book a car and book a parking lot. And you can even drive from point A to point B by uh, picking up the car, fulfill what errands you need to do and, and it, land it at the destinations and just park back the car and charge it back. So I think all these things, you know, actually increase a lot of interest in the public who really can't afford to own a car. But yet, this service allows them to utilize the license to do important, you know, errands, to run important errands, like even driving someone who is sick to the hospital, you know, or, and sometimes, you know, even private hires can be quite expensive because Blue SG actually um, charges by a timing, right? Whereas like private hires charges by distance. So actually charge it, sometimes you can, if you have the luxury of uh, smooth traffic, you can actually reach your destination faster and you can actually save the amount um, on, on other kind of public transport. So I think just to summarize you know what I just said, I think um, EVs has been, not just EVs itself, but EVs plus rental itself has packaged itself as uh, a service value add to people you know, who wants to own a car, but yet wants the private, who can't own a car, but yet want to enjoy the privacy of, own, of driving their own car. So true. Cars are so expensive in Singapore. Many of us who have driver's license, we may not drive, own a car. So no commitment of owning a car. You get a small, fun size, easy to manage car. You build your confidence, probably for many people, their first exposure to EVs. Lawrence also had an interesting and unique distinction of having this blue SG as his wedding car. What inspired that? Yeah, so I think it begs to the first 
point or story that I just talked about where my wife was the first person that introduces me to the Blue SG through an advertisement from online or Facebook. Um, and because of that, you know, um, after I got my account and when we were doing our church voluntary work, visiting children in Jurong West, we spotted, or rather she spotted, a station nearby. And we thought that there's a good chance to first utilize the account and rent our first Blue SG and drive back home after a tiring night visiting the children, exhausting our energy trying to entertain the kids. So I got really excited actually at the start, but yet a bit nervous because I haven't driven for the past three years and that will be my first time. And I have never been on a highway as well. So I thought that, okay, why not just, since I ended early, because uh, she was visiting in another area. So I took up the courage, I booked the car, I got the car, I went to um, use the kiosk and tap my EasyLink card, and I started my first Blue SG journey. And then and then, when I sit on the car seat, there was so much anxiety and unfamiliarity with driving, but I still push on, right? And so, after, so because I needed some time to build the confidence, so I actually drove around the Jurong West Estate for the good 30 minutes, just going from the same traffic light to the next traffic light and back to the same traffic light for almost like five to 10 rounds. <laughs> but after I get familiar, it was also time that I can pick up my wife and where she is at another side of Jurong West. So I pick her up and then um, when she was in the car seat, she was such an encourager and then she has been telling me to stay calm she helped me to look out for cars on the left in case I'm not familiar with changing lanes, etc. You know, and then and then, you know, when we were navigating to back then her home in Cha Chu you no, know, we, we that, that's when we realized we forgot to book our parking. And when we reached her home at that area, the parking was already full. So I can't return my car and send her home. So what happened was that we have to find the nearest uh next nearest station and of course she's very nice she followed me and the next nearest actually woodlands back then there were not many stations so the next one was at woodlands so we actually drove all the way to woodlands and the map tells us that we have to go through the highway and that was the first time they have to go through the highway so i think this whole experience kind of ignited you know although it was quite an adventurous incident or experience for the first time driving after three years but it united our passion for driving, both of us, that we love to kind of start driving from Blue SG um, for each other. And because of Blue SG as well, my wife actually went ahead to learn driving because now that you have this service available at an affordable rate, so she actually took up the, 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 the challenge to learn driving through a, uh, through a private school and she got her license you know, in, a, in several months time and she started also driving Blue SG together with me as not really as co-drivers but each of us take turns to rent a car and send each other or send our friends home. So we also started developing the love for sending our friends and families home. You know, in Amokyo, in Cha Chu Kang, in Pasir Ris, like all over Singapore. Like this kind of sparks that um, relationship or, or, or rather it added into an itinerary as how about our, our relationship of dating together um, and and also during celebratory uh, moments like Valentine's Day, our anniversary, we also surprise each other by decorating the Blue SG car with things that we like, especially like for her, she likes Stitch, you know, she likes characters that are cute, um, like Totoro, and then we will decorate the car uh, with those kind of items, right? To, 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 to kind of just do a surprise in each other, for each other. And I still remember there was also a time where I felt sick, you know, and I was back then working at uh, um, Galaxy's building in One North, and she was working in Alessandra. So she has a station nearby, and because she knows that I'm sick, and she wanted to send me home. So she actually booked the Blue SG back then, there, and then drove all the way to One North, and picked me up, and sent me home. And, and yeah, I think, because of all this, no, I can go on and on with all the stories that I'm going to bring up. But because of all this, Blue SG actually play a very significant part in both of our life, or especially our dating life, uh, all the way to our wedding day. And, um, and that's why, you know, 
we actually chose Blue SG as one of our as as our main wedding car actually in fact and we decorated the Blue SG car with of course the flowers, you know, the cottages, the corsages, you know, and use that as a symbol to demonstrate our union. Or there was a very powerful personal story about you know, like a couple getting together, your, your journey to EV, and I can see now how powerfully this culminated to the Blue SG. Of course, being your wedding car. Today, when you see Blue Edges on the street, how do you all feel? We will still feel very connected to it. Like, you know, we will still kind of say hi, although we don't know the person. We will just say hi, Blue SG, you know, saying, like, it's like a neighbor. It's like, some, it's like there's an emotional attachment to it because it plays a very important part in both our lives. This video was not sponsored by Blue SG. But of course, we're big fans. Yeah. Most Singaporeans do not own a car because cars are very expensive here. We have excellent public transportation and Blue SG has changed the way you've commuted for many years. What made you decide to get a Tesla Model 3? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, to be honest, I agree with you that the public transport system in Singapore is excellent. And I personally, I do love the public transport because back then, before I even owned a Tesla, I actually do my daily commute through the MRT. And during my MRT trip, I will utilize that one hour commute to read on my Kindle and I could finish a few chapters a day. And Blue SG has served as a private mode transport to go to places where, which is more secluded, which are more not inaccessible via public transport, like probably like Salita, you know, um, maybe like a Pasir Ris farm where I go there to see pets. You know, so this, so there are variations, you know, when it comes to the mode of transport in Singapore where you can go for the public or the private. When it comes to the decision of owning a car, I think it's really um, about the being financially able and also considering that my love for EV cars and also my love for driving and having the flexibility of owning a car, I think you'll have more time in your hands because you can, you will know where, when you can get a car without planning ahead. And if there's emergency, you will know that you have a peace of mind, you have the car which you can use to go to places um, uh, where you can meet the needs. On top of this, um, being a tech enthusiast, right? I do love smart vehicles. And back then, when, it, when I was in US, when I first test drive the Tesla Model 3, I got so in love with the tech system, the simplicity of it. Everything that's inside just excites me and as I mentioned before, not just love at first sight now, but it's deeply in love <laughs> with the vehicle. So I guess, and, and to be honest, you know, uh, having that love and being, having thought of financially that I could commit uh, to this financially, um, that's when combining all this, you know, I decided to own a car uh, and to buy a Tesla in fact. Thank you for sharing. Owning a car in Singapore is a big financial decision around 200,000 Singapore dollars. What factors would you consider when picking an EV? I think when it comes to um, considering what EV to choose, to be honest, personally, I have only really tested Tesla as one of my key, uh, key models. And personally, um, it's just like if you walk to an ice cream shop, right? And then you ask the person to test your first flavor. For example, if I love durian, I will ask for durian flavor. And if the durian flavor tastes nice, I will just give me a full scoop of it. And I just take it home and I eat it. So I think personally, that's how I kind of generally make my decisions as well. If I generally believe in something, then I will go ahead to try and test it because I know that 80% of the time, I'm already sold to it. So Tesla was the first you know, non-rental uh, EV that I drive and also it's the first one that I fully tested on and that's how I kind of make my decision uh, combining you know what uh, I talk about by like having a strong community having a strong brand presence I think that all helps me make this informed decision in owning a Tesla instead of considering other EVs you can see Lawrence two loves here the blue actually was his wedding car it started it all he's wearing a Tesla t-shirt here like me he's also joined the cloud pretty one of the unique things about owning a Tesla is access to the Tesla supercharger network, charging really fast at 250 kilowatts, which means 20 to 80% state of charge in under 15 minutes. 
So we're gonna head inside Lawrence Model 3 and let's find a station to head to. See you inside. We're now in Lawrence Tesla with a pretty low state of charge. You can see over here, it's yellow, about 85 km left. So Lawrence, why don't we head to Katong V Supercharger and talk about the whole charging experience owning an EV? Yeah, sure. Let's navigate there. It will take us 15 minutes, 8 kilometers to our charger. And with Tesla's, when you navigate the screen, it will also show you the remaining state of charge once you reach a destination. So we'll reach at 17% state of charge. Okay, let's head over. Let's go. Along the drive, we'll just ask Lawrence his experience owning the Tesla so far, what he likes and what he wish was different. Lawrence, first question, what do you love most about your Tesla Model 3? Um, that's a very good question. So I like it that it is very quiet when you drive, when you press on the accelerator and when you need to brake, you will actually automatically brake. And we, that's what we call the regenerative braking. And um, one more thing I like is this huge screen over here, which you can really play your mu favorite music on Spotify and you can see the vehicles that are close to you that will probably appear soon in just a short moment's time when I'm getting close to the car. Yeah, and soon you will see them appearing on the screen. Um, and especially when there's like a motorbike that is near you as, and it can be happening quite often here. Because if you didn't check your blind spots, they might just speed past you. And having this visibility on this dashboard can actually help you to uh, kind of uh, prevent yourself from cl clash colliding with them, right? Yeah, so the good thing about Tesla is a lot of safety features. When you turn on a turn signal, you also see uh, like a blind spot camera appear by the side as well. Like so. What can Tesla do better? Hmm, what can Tesla do better? I think I thought of this automated door feature because I personally like to hitch people and give people a leave. And a lot of times these people may be the first time they are taking on board a Tesla and they were not able to find a way to open the door. So having an automated opening of the door feature might be very helpful, especially uh, even for elderly right? who, who can make it even more um, suitable for people of all ages. And I think something else that's missing for Tesla might be um, like the map itself. Um, for me, I experience from what I know is that the map downloads data from Google map and uses Mapbox as its navigation feature. But the thing is, uh, Mapbox seems to have um, some inaccuracy when it comes to navigating in Singapore, especially if we compare to other maps, which is created, for example, by Grab, they actually tells you where exactly the bus lane is on the far left. And this is something that if Tesla can work with a local um, vendor or, a lo or LT even LTA and map out the whole system to make it so localized and suitable for local drivers, I think that would be very, very helpful, especially um, Tesla being a very smart car can, it can get the local intelligence in as well into this entire machine or robot on wheels. Fully agree. Uh, navigation is very important to give us confidence and if it sends us to the wrong exits or routes, especially a few times, uh, some owners may lose confidence. That's why you see quite a fair bit of Tesla owners. We still use our phones. Lawrence has his mounted here as well. For Google Maps or Waze that some owners use. So hopefully we'll continue to have improved navigation. It's very helpful for superchargers. That's why we're using it right now. And it helps to precondition the car battery so that it charges faster. But better maps would be on top of the wish list for many of us. Anything else? Um, yeah, I think one more thing will be the, I would say the Tesla own app store, right? Where, we, where probably developers can, especially for those prominent or popular apps like Spotify, Apple Music, or even the Android Play, I'm just giving names as I think of them. They can all be classified under one, te one Tesla app and people 
will have different flavors, especially across different drivers. And they will want their favorite apps to be available on Tesla so that they can enjoy the whole driving experience, which is very important, especially when it comes to driving long distance or even short distance sometimes when they are stuck in a traffic jam. That's a good point. A lot of car owners, especially in modern cars, they appreciate the UI that comes with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and the ecosystem of apps. For a few years now, there's a potential for an app store on Teslas. The user base is quite huge already. There are more than 3 million Teslas on the road. So opening that up will be another big win for Tesla. We're now reaching Katong V. Yes. You've been in three other superchargers. This is your first time charging the Katong V, yes? Yes. And look, we've got a red Model Y charging next to us as well. Interestingly, on the side cameras, you can see the red actually appears more browny. How do we charge a Tesla? Alright, let's take a look at how can we charge a Tesla. First, we need to remove the charging handle, pulling it upward and lifting it down. And then when it comes near to the charging port, can you look at this button over here? After you press it, the charging port um, power actually automatically opens. And that's when you can actually plug in the charging handle and start charging. And on the screen itself right now, it will display the amount of time remaining for you to do a full charge based on the cap that you have set. So that's actually pretty fast, right? Because it's showing on the screen 25 minutes. Yeah, it's very, very fast. That's why it's called a supercharger. The, this supercharger, if you're using a rear wheel drive or SR Plus, it charges up to 170 kilowatts. If you're using a performance, it charges up to 250 kilowatts. Pretty darn fast. For many people, owning an EV, the biggest concern is the hassle of finding where to charge and waiting to charge. What is your charging routine like? Yeah, so my charging routine is on average about two to three times um, a week. Um, so every time when I consider to charge, I will definitely check on my battery level. Right, if the battery can last me at least for a hundred kilometer, I will consider to go for to that my destination before considering to charge it again. And based on where I live and based on where I work, where I live doesn't have a charging stations nearby. So what I need to do is I have to travel at least about five kilometers to the nearest station before I can do a charge. So I have to account for such caveats or shortfalls where there's limitation in the amount of charges nearby me. But when I go to work, I have the luxury of charging station just right below the office. And that's where I know and have a peace of mind that I can have a, uh, I can do my charging um, over there. So I think back to the first question, I think what is my charging routine like? Based on the my um, driving habits recently, I charge on average two to three days. Um, Per week. And every day you drive roughly about what? Almost close to 60 kilometers? Close to 60 kilometers. That's almost like from Tuas to airport every single day. That is end to end of Singapore. Slightly more than end to end in Singapore. Yeah. In most countries, EV owners, they've got landed property, like some of the homes behind us. Because when you charge at home, it's more convenient and cheaper. Here in Singapore, 80% of us stay in public housing, HDB. So we, we don't have home charging like Lawrence. Is having an EV a deal breaker? Right, so I think first piece of good news is that government has planned to actually increase the amount of EV charges from the current numbers to 30, uh, 60,000 in 2030. So I, we believe with this push and this um, encouraging movements towards more EVs uh, charges in the near future, I think that we can only expect more charges to open up. So I think with this, amount of knowledge and peace in mind, I think it's not a big concern. Like what I just mentioned previously, that even at the workplace where I'm in, 
the destinations or the places that I places of interest that I go in the weekends. They all actually have a kind of chargers, whether it is super chargers, Singapore power chargers, shall we charge chargers? They all have one that is just within a one to two kilometer radius. So with this amount, in this current supply and with more to come, I think we all can have a peace of mind that if you are owning an EV, you definitely will be able to get to a charger just nearby anywhere you go in Singapore. And it does not need to be just a Tesla supercharger. We were having hot dogs earlier at IKEA Tampinis because it was raining. We had to wait for a while to film after the rain subsided. And they have four free slow AC charger at 7.6 kilowatts. You can charge for free for two hours. That's a great perk. So more and more of these public chargers are coming up in more locations. It's a great way to attract customers as well for malls. How much are you spending right now on charging your car? Actually, on average, I'm spending about um, $45 a day. Rough. But that, that makes up to about $80 in two weeks. With constant daily driving from Tuas to the airport, I just talked about. I think comparatively to fuel, you will definitely spend more because you will need a full tank to get you to distance. So I have already saved a lot just by charging. And of course, we are just not talking about the good things, but charging takes a bit more time than refueling. <laughs> but those time you can actually spend doing other work um, you're at the comfort of your seat um, without smelling you know, petrol around you. But I guess there are more benefits which outweighs you know, the, the extras or which outweighs you know, what petrol brings. I've also recently surveyed about uh, quite a number of Tesla owners in Singapore. I think close to 70% of them don't have home charging. They're saving a fair bit of money as Lawrence is mentioning also. So over time when you look at your own car for years, such a huge investment, you're not going to use it for just a short time. And when you look at the 5-10 year period, the savings will accumulate. Today, 12% of all car buyers are buying an EV, whether it's a Tesla, a BYD, an MG. What's one tip you have for people considering an EV in Singapore? Yeah, the one tip I have will be actually two pointers in this one tip. I think the first pointer is do your research and do your homework. Research about the brand. You know, learn about more about the models that you may get, the kind of grant you're entitled, the financial commitments that you are getting yourself into, and of course, um, a lot about the support and the customer service even from the dealer itself, right? So I think that's one of the things that you can do on yourself um, to research about it and get knowledgeable and equipped about the brand and about the company and about the model. So I think the second part to this one tip that I have is also joining a community I think Tesla itself has a very strong community locally and globally where people discuss the issues that they face with the car from the first model to the latest model and people are constantly um, engaging with each other, sharing how they troubleshoot the problems and all these problems that you know, have been surfaced out. It's like a Google, right? It's like a Google in the community where you can search for problems and find solutions immediately because sometimes road assistance and getting the call might requires a, a period of time, a period of waiting time before you get your help needed. But a community that is always there for you can actually help you uh, rectify or remedy the situation on the fly. So I think for myself, you no, know, even before getting this Tesla, I have personally researched and also joined community to ask questions about the car before I eventually went over to US to test drive it and get familiar and confident with how the car works before getting and committed to one. So of course on the last part that I just now talked about probably is the third point to this part is on the financial commitment where you should be financially able you know, before owning a car that is, old, that is on the higher end and it will cost more as well in Singapore because of COE rising prices. So these three tips I have, do your homework, you know, research about the car, join a community and ensure that you are financially able. Very helpful words of wisdom. Lawrence is one of our EV pioneers, but they're now close to more than 5,000 EV owners in Singapore. So there's a lot of wisdom we can learn from as we move from early adoptions to mass adoption already right now at this stage in the next couple of years in Singapore. Lawrence, thank you so much for sharing your journey as an EV pioneer, going from Blue SG six years ago to being a Tesla Model 3 owner today. And as Lawrence mentioned, while there's a lot more options available for cars EVs or price ranges, not all of us need to drive a private car. So Lawrence had 
a benefit of using services like Blue SG for many years. And that could still be a very viable option for many of us who want that middle ground between public transportation and private car ownership. In fact, Blue SG is recently launching 500 new Opel larger EVs that will be more accessible, more useful for more people rolling out these three months from October to December. There's a huge journey ahead as Singapore transitions to sustainable energy and we'll continue hearing more stories from friends like Lawrence over here. If you found this video useful, please click the like button. Hit subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla.